So it's been a while since Umar Nurmagomedov has fought and he just got booked up with an absolute nobody. No disrespect to this guy. His name is Bekzat Almakan. He has a good record, but it's his UFC debut. And what the fuck is the UFC doing? There are some reasons as to why this may have been made. But as far as I'm concerned, now to be honest, this is going to be at the apex. Another what the fuck moment. Can we get the fuck out of the apex, please? <laughs> okay, but listen, I've been waiting for Umar Nurmagomedov's return. And it's just a little bit annoying that we're going from Umar Nurmagomedov, hyped up bantamweight prospect, Habib 5.0, whatever you want to call him, versus Corey Sanhagen, possibly a number one contender's fight. He pulled out like he always does. This guy pulls out of like every fucking fight. But not only does he pull out all the time, he didn't even deserve that big bump up to fight Corey Sanhagen. Just an example of Dagestani privilege. If you're related to Habib or you've ever been in the same room with him, when we're going to give you an undeserved number one contender's fight. But we're going from that, Sanhagen, where we're telling the world, this is the next guy. This guy is a beast. Everyone's afraid of him. We can only get a badass like Sanhagen to entertain that. We're going from that to, I forgot his name already, because he's a nobody. He's not fought in the UFC. This is not me being disrespectful. That's just the truth. Bekzat Almakan? Are you kidding me? Is this a joke? Come on. Like, I'm looking at the Bantamweight rankings right now. If it's the case that every single person is ducking Umar behind the scenes, let's say, again, we're going from Rowney Barcelos, is the last guy that Umar finished, and he's tearing through people. We at least know that Umar is going to be able to beat guys outside of the top 20, outside of the top 25. Let's give him a little bit of a bump up. Just like Cody Brundage fighting Bo Nickel. That's useless. We don't want to see it because we don't think it's a step up in competition. And we're convinced that Bo Nickel is going to be able to run through the bottom of the barrel. How is this any different from Rowney Barcelos? At least Rowney's crafty and he's been around and he's got experience. I'm sure this kid that uh, Umar's facing, Bexat al Makan, I'm sure he's got some durability, but he's... He's fucked. This guy is like looking like a skinny little twig. And Umar is probably going to fucking muscle him around and finish him in the first. <sighs> I just can't stand this, man. We, we want to see Umar take a bump up and fight someone relevant. You can't go from Sanhagen number one contenders fight to an absolute nobody. What are you doing? UFC, they got to get some young guns in there that understand how this shit works. We got to get boots on the ground. People like me that are connected with the fan base, that understand what the average UFC fan wants. They're so out of touch. They don't know how to handle these situations. If it's the case where, let's say, Montel Jackson, Saeed Nurmagomedov is just not going to fight him, so that <laughs> these guys aren't going to fight each other. Uh, if it's the case that Montel Jackson, who is at least some bit of a relevant name, who has done stuff in the UFC, if Montel Jackson... Ricky Simone, who fought recently, but it's not like it was forever ago. That was last year. Ricky Simone, Mario Batista, Jonathan Martinez, Chris Gutierrez. Let's see, Rob Font. I don't know. Is there anyone else higher? I guess no one else is going to fight him. Fair enough. But if all of those guys have turned him down, then I sort of understand it. But even then, even then, we could at least go with an Adrian Yanez. We could at least maybe go with a, a Javid Basharat. Hey, th that Javid Basharat guy's undefeated. People know who he is. They've been introduced to him. They've had to suffer through that guy's boring ass fights. And at least stylistically, it's interesting because the Basharat brothers are good grapplers. And they may not be powerful and they may not be that dynamic on the feet, but they know what they're doing on the ground. Stylistically, it's interesting. We know the face. We know the name. You, you can't tell me that it's not possible to make another matchup. Like, if this is last resort, I get it. But it'd be a good idea for the UFC to come out and tell the fans. They should understand that people are going to erupt with this news. Nobody wants to see this. Even if I'm a, a big Umar Nurmagomedov fan and I want this guy to win, I still want to see him fight someone that's exciting where at least in my mind I'm thinking, 
no, this is going to be a test. Maybe he's not going to get the takedown so easy, right? There is going to be a little bit of resistance, and I want to see how he handles that. We don't want to see Nganu, Francis, knock out a hobo. We don't want to see Joe Pfeiffer knock out some bum. We want to see competition, a little bit of it. And this guy that Umar is fighting, he's 17-1, and one, Bekzat Al-Makan. I'm going to be honest. I haven't done a lot of research. I haven't watched him fight yet, but my point still stands. We don't know the name. We don't know the face. You could make the argument that, oh, well, we didn't know who Diego Lopez was before he fought Evlev and look at what he did. Fair enough. It's possible, but it's very unlikely. Maybe Weasel will, maybe the Weasel will come out with a video in five minutes and it'll be about how Bexat's an absolute fucking savage and look how technical this guy is and I'll change my mind. But that's probably going to be rare, right? Fair enough, Umar hasn't really done a lot. And to think of him as like a top 10 caliber guy, it may not be the case. But I have a feeling that it is, all right? Guys like Magomed Ankalaev and Mavzar Evluev, Islam Makhachev, Uzman or Magomedov, even though he's not in the UFC, they are always going to be able to crack the top 10, all right? Umar is not Abu Bakar. He's not Zubayr Tukagov. He's different. Right? You, you can understand the difference between these guys as soon as they fight a couple of times in the UFC. Umar is one of the guys that will get to the top, and I don't want to see him fight some random, some random dude. Right? Like, Evluev, I think he was booked to fight someone else before he fought Diego Lopez too, which is also a bit of a better excuse for that. I think he was booked to fight Bryce Mitchell, and maybe Bryce Mitchell pulled out, or someone else pulled out. And then he was booked to fight Diego Lopez. So at least that's excusable. He wasn't booked to fight a random far in advance. And Evloev wasn't going from Holloway to a random far in advance. They have, I mean, to be fair, they don't have a lot of time. When I look at the date, it's March 2nd. They actually don't have a lot of time. You know what? I just looked at the date. It's February 13th. Well, I'm already recording the video. It is what it is. So... Because it's made on such short notice, I can kind of understand it. This is in two weeks. But again, it's just like a freebie. It's a free win. I'd rather wait an extra month to see Umar on 300. This is what the UFC should be doing. They're making Kayla Harris and Holly Holm. Fuck that. Let's get Umar Nurmagomedov on 300. Give him a little bit more time and we'll see a more relevant matchup. Because if Umar takes this fight, then guess what? He's out for another six months, seven months, wait until Abu Dhabi. Screw that. You're telling me he couldn't fight Ricky Simone a month and a half from now? I hate to be the guy that's complaining like, oh, I don't want to see this fight yet. Let's wait longer. But still, I'd rather wait a little bit longer. And if I'm the UFC, I'm getting out there at a press conference and I'm saying everyone's ducking him. We tried to get Montel Jackson. We tried to get Daniel Marcos. We tried to get Adrian Giannis. Everyone's ducking him. Batista, Martinez, they don't want the smoke. Now, maybe that's harsh. I could understand. You don't necessarily have to name drop them, okay? What you could at least do, if I'm Dana White, I'm making a press release, and I'm letting the fans know the exact number of people that turned Umar down. I'm going to say four of them were ranked. Seven of them were right outside the rankings. Maybe it's 11 on the dot. Just let us know the exact number of people so that we could at least view the matchup as more palatable, okay? Or at least we know the rhyme or reason as to why this, be, this is being made. I understand that maybe Umar doesn't want to fight on 300 or 301 because that's going to be during Ramadan, but like, why not just fight in June, man? Why is it always that, oh, if they can't fight during Ramadan, they have to fight in Abu Dhabi? Like, Ramadan ends before June, why couldn't you book Umar for June? I would have been happier with that if it was against a relevant face. Let me know in the comments. Would you rather see Umar in two weeks versus a fucking nobody? He could be okay. I don't know yet. But the point is, we can't get that hype for it. And it's put together last second. So not only does this new opponent just not have a whole lot of time to prepare for it, which also kind of gives him a worse chance to win the fight. Would you rather see that on two weeks? Or would you rather see Umar fight in June? Or July, where that they have someone like Javid Basharat, or they got someone like Jonathan Martinez. I understand that people turn Umar down. That's a risky fight. Tell us that people are turning him down, 
And, and Dana has said it, but get really specific. It's good to get specific. Fans will like that. They'll have an easier time accepting a matchup like this. But hey, you know what? Fuck it. Add an extra 50K onto one of these fighters' purses uh, in order for them to fight this guy. Because it's important. The fans want to see it. And you're only going to have to do with a couple more of these instances where people are tuning Umar down. Eventually, he'll be in the top five. And the hungry guys coming up are going to be itching to fight anyone in the top five. And they'll not turn him down. Right? Eventually, he could be a champion. And everyone's going to want to fight him. Right now, it's a little bit tricky. If you have to, fuck it. Add another 30000 to the guy who he's going to be fighting. Give him an extra thirty k to accept it. People want to see Umar. He's got a big fan base just by default of having all of those relationships going into the UFC. There are ways to make these fights happen. There are. Now, of course, this is a, an exception to the norm. Not everyone is going to be ducking everyone where you have to pay every single fighter $50,000 more to fight just anybody. It's Umar. Very specific case. We're going from a guy that was booked to fight Sanhagen to now this. Come on. Handle this situation better. Handle it better than this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd much rather the UFC make a matchup for June, July. Again, that's after Ramadan. If anything, I'm sure Ramadan could make the weight cut even easier. But anyway, until next time.